everybody. Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy, hanging out with you today on another a podcast episode. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for being with me. Uh, in today's episode, I'm going to do a deep dive into the PE going computer based, or as they call it, CBT. So it's going to be an interesting topic as the clock flips on this in January of 2022 where the civil PE exam will be exclusively computer-based, no more paper-based exam. Uh, and there's some positives and negatives to that, but it doesn't really matter because that's the way it's going moving forward. And we're gonna talk all about it. So if you are interested in learning more about the CBT exam uh, for civil engineers, hang around with me because it's gonna be a good episode and it's all coming up right after this. All right, guys, so let's get right into it. So today we're gonna do a deep dive into the civil engineering uh, PE exam going CBT in January of 2022. And I wanted to share a lot of details about what that means and everything about uh, the CBT exam. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the specifications. So uh, with the exam going CBT in January, did the specifications change? And the question and the answer to that is basically no. So the specs didn't change. They haven't changed since 2015, which is quite nice because it's not another thing they wanted to tackle, I'm sure, on top of moving everything to a computer-based exam, also updating the specifications. So you'll notice that the specs don't change. Uh, what they did do, uh, if you look at the specifications from the NCES, is that they removed any reference to an AM or PM section of the exam or part one or part two, however you wanna word that. And that's simply because now the specification, uh, they can test you on any question at any time. So, you know, it used to be an AM portion of the exam and you knew kind of what you were getting into. They were a little easier problems. It was a breadth of knowledge. And the PM exam was depth sections. Now you will have one specification and it still is AM and PM sections, but there's no designation there. Uh, anymore. So what does that mean? That means they can ask you anything they want whenever they want to on the exam. So you kind of have to be prepared uh, with that. But does that mean the exam strategy changes as you take it? It does not. What I mean by that is that you can simply go through the exam uh, when it's computer based and answer the uh, obviously the answers that are easiest to you right off the beginning. Flag those that you have no idea how to pat or solve yet and come back to it when you can't. And in that way, you're in a similar way trying to break that up as, as an AM and a PM type of exam where you're answering the easiest questions first and coming back and solving the hard ones. So the, the answer to that question, did the specs change? They didn't. Uh, the things that did change is they updated the codes that are used, so the standards and codes that are used in reference, uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the specs didn't change, and to be honest with you, the core engineering subjects in their, their specifications never change. They might mix in, mix them around a little bit, give them a different title, like transportation, they change the geometrics, they might go back to transportation, who knows. Uh, but those core engineering topics really never change over time. And so uh, if you're ever looking into a review course and you're wondering if all the material is covered, just know that all the core engineering material never changes and you should be good to go. All right, the next question that I often get is what can you bring into the exam with you? Now, when you go into an exam, it's going to be at a Pearson View Testing Center now. No longer are you going into a conference room with a thousand people in there. It's going to be very small. You're going to have your own little cubicle and your own computer, and uh, that's pretty much it. You can bring a, uh, an approved NCES calculator, so make sure you have that. And they give you a pad of paper and I think uh, or an, um, a pen that you can erase, okay? And that, that's pretty much it. So not a lot that you're bringing in with you. Everything else needs to be stored in a locker. So if you have a cell phone or anything else, uh, you need to put that away. So really you can't bring a lot with you into the exam. Now, if you're wondering about, is this book, is the test now open book? It is not open book. You can't bring in whatever book or material that you want to bring in with you anymore. Uh, it is closed book, well, semi-closed. You're gonna have access to the PE reference handbook and you're gonna have access to codes and standards. And they're all gonna be searchable PDFs that you will have at on your screen. So the left-hand side of your screen is going to be your PDF and the right-hand side of your screen is going to be the exam. And you can use the search functionalities for the handbook as well as the codes that they give you 
and just search anything that you want there. And that's pretty much it. So uh, if you're wondering about what you can bring into the exam with you, no books, just an approved calculator, bring your ID, don't bring in your cell phone, get that locker, fill it up with the crap that you brought. So don't do that, you'll probably get kicked out. So uh, that's a, uh, another good question that people often ask. Okay, another question that's asked about the CBT exam, is it, is it all multiple choice? And the answer to that is no. But the surprise answer to that is that the majority of the questions still are multiple choice. So if you're thinking, oh crap, you know, they're gonna ask me any type of question any way they want to, that's, that's not true. The majority of the questions are still going to be multiple choice, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And if you're using practice exams and practicing problems that are multiple choice, you're still gonna do well with these alternative item type problems anyway, because frankly, you're just gonna know how to solve these things, right? So, uh, you know, get used to solving problems, you're gonna be just fine. So what does it include? These alternative item types can include point and click. So if they give a graph or something, you'd have to point and click on a correct answer. Um, they have multiple choice we covered. They have drag and drop, so you can drag and drop lists of things in different spots. Um, they have my personal favorite, which is fill in the blank. And who knows what that might entail or how they know it's wrong. Uh, maybe you went too many significant figures or not enough. I don't know. There's all of those things that come into play with that. So uh, those are all the different kind of questions they could ask as part of those alternative item type questions. They do give you a tool where you can draw a line across. So if you're looking at a graph, you can definitely draw a straight line and try to get an answer that way. But uh, I know these type of problems might scare people, but if you are getting enough practice pro problems in and you're already solving multiple choice type of problems, you're gonna be just fine in solving these ones as well. Uh, you know, Give it your best effort, you'll be just fine. So, great question. All right, the next question I have is, when can you take the CBT exam? Now, these exams can be taken as early as January of 2022, and you can start registering for them in November, November 1st so of 2021. So you can get started right away in November on registering for these, selecting the depth exam that you wanna take and getting prepared to take a computer-based PE exam. And a lot of people are excited for this because of the search, you know, search functions, the need to not, you know, not having to bring in suitcases full of books and stuff like that. And so everything is just right there at your fingertips. So the exams are year round now. They basically are chunked up into quarters. You can only take one exam each quarter. So let's say you failed an exam in January, you probably can't take one till April, right? So you have to take uh, one each quarter. And you can only, take the exam three times in a 12 month period. So if you do happen to fail the exam three times, you're gonna have to wait 12 months in order to take it again. So that's kind of the rules around when you can take the exam, how often you can take the exam, and really when they're administered. Now, everyone's gonna, they have a pool of problems. The level of difficulty will be the same among those problems, but everyone's gonna have different problems that they are going to be solving. So don't expect the neighbor that you're sitting by to solve the same problems that you are anymore. They might have the same difficulty, but they're not gonna be the same problems. And then they use their special method called a loft or linear on the fly method to administer these questions to you. So they, um, you know, things are on the fly in asking you different questions. So that is a, a thing that comes up, but that helps to answer when you can take the exam. All right, the next question that I often get is, where can I take the exam? And the truth is, is that you can take it at any Pearson View testing center. So they're gonna have a bunch of them around. You just go find one and you can take it. So that's gonna be a lot different than going to a conference center uh, with thousands of people that are taking this exam and uh, everybody's worried and nervous and, and whatever. So now you're just going into a small setting with your own cubicle, your own computer, your lovely calculator, and off you go. So all you have to do is find a Pearson View Testing Center and uh, you'll be set and ready to go. Okay, the next question that I, that I often get asked is did they change the amount of problems that they ask you? And they didn't. So it is still going to be 80 questions that you have to solve in an eight hour time period. 
Now, the total testing period is, is nine hours that they give you, but you're gonna have a 50 minute break that they offer to give you, which I highly recommend taking, about a halfway mark. And they also have to sign some of their agreements and waivers and all that fun stuff at the beginning. And uh, that takes up a little bit of time as well. But at the end of the day, it's still an eight hour exam in total time that you have to solve your problems. You still have a break, a 50 minute break that you can go take a lunch or decompress or whatever you need to do. And uh, it's still that same old 80 question, eight hour exam. And I can tell you that you're probably gonna need a similar score as the paper-based, which isn't totally true, but it's typically around a 70% that you need to get right. So we'll see how that goes, but um, that's typically what you're shooting for. That's how much time you have to take it, and that's how many questions are on the exam. Okay, the next question that I often get is, how much is this going to cost me? So the registration fee to take the CBT exam is $375. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> you know, add up everything else you got to buy to study for this thing. It gets really expensive. And that doesn't include the fees that you have to pay to apply to get your license after you pass the exam. And that ranges from state to state. Uh, I recently applied for an Oregon license. It's a $400 application fee. Now, not every state is that much, but you get the idea. So stuff can add up quickly. I would definitely recommend trying to see if your employer will pay for some of those costs, as most employers do. Uh, they'll, they'll pay for your registration for uh, your PE license and states and things of that nature. Uh, but you're going to be on the hook for that $375 fee to register to take this exam. It's not a small fee, uh, but that's the reality of it. So, sorry. Okay, the next question that is coming to me all the time is, are they still gonna ask breadth and depth type questions? And the answer to that, I already alluded to earlier. If you look at the specifications, they don't break up the sections anymore into AM and PM anymore. And so you could be asked PM type questions at any time during the exam, because they can ask you whatever, whatever, whenever, right? So uh, the reality though, is that you still have AM type questions scattered throughout the exam. And you're going to also have PM type questions scattered throughout the exam as well. Again, go check out. There's an exam strategy to that. Solve the easiest ones first, flagging those that are most difficult, and just come back and solve those that you skipped over. Make sure you get an answer on everything because you need an answer on everything or otherwise it's wrong. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, there's still going to be AM and PM type questions, but they get got rid of that kind of clear designation between the two and that's just all mixed into one big batch. So that's a good question. Alrighty, the next question that I typically get is how long will it take for me to get results back? Now this is the biggest benefit of taking a computer-based exam in my opinion. And that is because you're used to waiting 10 weeks to get results. I mean, if you took the exam in October, it could be a horrible Christmas present that you opened if you failed the exam. But now you get results in seven to 10 days and it's coming to you the same way. They shoot you an email about your results and off you go. And if you failed, you register for the next exam in the next three month period or the next quarter and you just keep going. So they, I really like this because it's made it much easier to get back on the horse and keep going with the exam instead of having to wait six more months or whatever you do. If you skip an exam, that's a whole nother year, which is not good. So you can just get back on that horse, keep going, keep studying, keep moving forward fairly quickly. I love that you get results back in seven to 10 days and off you go. And uh, so, you know, that's a big benefit of going computer-based. And I think it's one you might enjoy too. All right, another question that I often get is, what if I fail? So I answered this already earlier, but if you do fail, uh, you can take the exam again, but it has to be in the next quarter that they, they administer the exam. You can't take it in the same three month period uh, that you registered for. You have to wait for the next three month period to take it. And you can take that up to three times, okay? If you fail three times, you have to wait 12 months before you take it again. So uh, really that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, in the past, if you failed an exam, you had to wait six more months to take it. Uh, and that sucked. So now you can just keep going, like I said, and keep rolling with it. So if you fail, it's not such a blow. You are out money and time and things of that nature, but you can take that exam 
fairly quickly and try and try again. All right, next question that I often get is what can I do if I need to, what, what do I need to do if I need to cancel the exam? And what happens in that process? So if you think you registered for the exam and then you go and cancel it, you're gonna be slapped with a $50 fee or you reschedule it, you're gonna be slapped with a $50 fee, an administration fee to do that. So I don't recommend keep doing that. You're just gonna be out money every time you do that. They do have exceptions to that rule, but it's really clear that it needs to be like for an illness in the family or you don't feel well, uh, weather is a condition, if you have military duty, jury duty. So there's a few reasons why you can uh, bump your test to another period, but you're gonna have to provide proof for that. And frankly, if you do change anything, uh, they won't allow you to change anything up if you have the exam within 48 hours. But if you do change things in advance, uh, you can be hit with that $50 fee, which they will assess to you to change things. So try to avoid changing things, swap things. I mean, if you have to, you have to. But if you can avoid it, I definitely would because it's just going to cost you money and that, that stinks. So don't do that. So that's what happens if you cancel your appointment. Okay, another question that I often get is, okay, so I registered for the exam and I was gonna take uh, transportation, but now I wanna take water resources. What, I mean, what, what has to happen? And what they state is that you have to actually cancel the exam that you registered for. You pay a $50 fee for doing that, and then you can register for the next exam for the depth exam that you wanna take it in. So that goes back to cancellation of your, um, of taking the exam. Anytime you cancel that course, it's gonna or not the course, but the, the class or the exam is uh, it's gonna cost you $50. So you don't wanna do that. Try to avoid that. Try to go in knowing what you wanna take and it'll save you some money. All right, lastly is some questions about what you can also bring in with you to the exam. And they, they do have a list of things that they allow you to, to do. I already mentioned this, but really you're only allowed your calculator and your ID. But if you are cold, you can bring in a light jacket you're gonna receive a little booklet and a marker specifically. You can bring in your eyeglasses if you wear eyeglasses and that's about it. So um, I already hit that earlier, but that's really the details of all the things you can bring with you into the exam. So don't expect to bring too much with you. So that's about it. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a deep dive into the PE exam going computer-based and answering questions that you all have about this going CBT. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to let me know. You can let them know, know in the comments or feel free to shoot me an email, Isaac at Civil Engineering Academy. Let me know what you think about the exam going computer-based. Do you enjoy that? Do you, do you like that it's going computer-based or do you think it's gonna be more difficult or less difficult, easier, harder? I want to know what your opinion is. So let me know in the comments. I'm really interested in hearing about that. And if you need additional resources, go check out civilengineeringacademy.com. We will be there every step of the way. If you're studying to prepare for the FE or the PE exam, we have resources and courses there to help you. And because the spec did not really change that much uh, at all, our course is still very much valid. So go check out the ultimate civil PE review course at civilpereviewcourse.com. And it will take you step by step hand in hand and take you through the course and all the modules you need to do and practice problems and everything else that we have for you built there to help you ace this exam. It's a really, really sweet thing. So anyway, with that, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Woo.